The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. La 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 la. Words are going. Cut, 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 Jeff. Cut. Cut. Just cut. What are you doing, man? The Julia, the producer, said I had creative control. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But this is a feature film, The Princess Knight. There's lots of people working on it. You gotta know your stuff. You, you can't be out of sync like that, man. We sent you the audio three weeks ago. It, it's, a, it's a social experiment. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm trying to answer a question, okay? And the question is this, okay? What would happen if I showed up unprepared to every major life event for the span of three years? <laughs> job, job, what? Why don't you go take uh, five? Take five at Crafty. Get yourself some sushi. That would be good. Vacate my life right now. I can. And we'll do this again in five minutes. How's I, that sound? I do like sushi. Thanks. Great. <sighs> okay. Waka 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 waka. Book more. Book more. Oh. Hello, this is Ben. Uh, ben, it, it's Ryan with Backflip. Who works at Backflip Films and helps Max produce the show? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we have this problem with this this puppeteer uh, diva, and he's just not nailing the lines. We already have the audio right, and so he just has to match the audio, but he's way off. Do you think you think you could come up with something that could help us out with that? Well, I suppose what we could do is make an automated puppet jaw that would react to the user's voice. That way, they wouldn't have to bother to animate them at all. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I could I could probably replace him with that. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. The goal of our animatronic puppet is to create a puppet mouth that moves when the user speaks. So it does this automatically instead of you having to use your hand. So here are the steps I want to take. We have to take the voice waves, which are going to look like blah, a bunch of, you know, waves and then convert those into square waves somehow, so it's more digital, then take those square waves and turn them into a long solid wave. When you make a noise like D, there's actually, you know, many oscillations in there. So we have to take the oscillations and turn them into a large block of on off. So basically it's not what you're saying, it's just the fact that you're either talking or not talking. Uh, then once we have this binary on off state, we're going to have to figure out a way to make that actuate a puppet's mouth. Maybe a servo, maybe a solenoid, gear motor, I'm not exactly sure. Whatever it is will have to be fast. So we'll try to build that inside of a puppet head, and if that doesn't work, we might have to just build a puppet around it. Let's get started. Here's the example circuit that I have set up. We have a microphone that is picking up my voice. Then we have two op amps that are increasing the waveform of the microphone. And the third op amp is acting as a comparator to kind of saw it off. So it's turning the wave into a square digital-like signal. And I also have some potentiometers on here so we can adjust the levels. So op amps have two inputs and one output and they are comparing the two inputs to each other. So in this case, one input has the voltage of the microphone coming into it and the other one has a reference voltage. And if this voltage exceeds this voltage, then you get a certain output. You put a couple of those together and you can increase the waveform substantially because what comes out of the microphone is very low. And then the third stage, we can say, okay, if the waveform of the voice gets past a certain level, that is a trigger point for, okay, that's, talking, that's where we want the puppet mouth to move. We can see it with more detail using the scope. I'm using three channels of this Tektronix scope. The first channel shows my voice after it goes through two stages of the op amp. So you can see it pretty clearly on the scope there. I'm gonna turn on the next channel. This channel represents the output of the comparator op amp. So this is what's going to hopefully drive our puppet mouth. Uh, right now it's just a high five volts, it's not doing anything. This third channel is the comparator voltage for the final stage. If the voice wave gets above this level, then that will trigger the output of the third op amp. Right now it's not doing anything. If I adjust it, okay, now see how the magenta line is coming down? Once the magenta line crosses the voice, you will see the light cyan line begin to react. I'm gonna put it right above the threshold. 
This is the rare experiment where me talking affects the experiment. <laughs> okay, so now if there's no voice whatsoever like this, see how it stays below the magenta line? But when I talk, it goes above the magenta line, which is triggering the output. Let me separate these. I'll just move these around on the scope. Okay, now you can clearly see how the third op amp is comparing my voice to a reference voltage and then giving us a square wave output when it sees something past a certain threshold. So this cyan square wave output is what I'm hoping we can use to drive the puppet mouth in some way. I'm gonna dial in some settings using the potentiometers and then I can hardwire it when I build the final circuit. But I would like to try to do this with all discrete logic. It's just a fun challenge. This breadboard has a 555 timer on it driving a servo. Let's attach it to our existing board. Right now, the servo is being driven by this potentiometer, which is acting as a voltage divider. What I'd like to try is getting the output from our voice activation circuit to at least affect the servo. Maybe not the right way, but just some sort of voice activated effect. So I think I'll do that by taking our output, which is going from five volts and going down, and attaching that to part of the voltage divider. going crazy. Something to keep in mind is the servo is probably reacting to its own noise in the twilight zone. Hello? 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 Well, this proves we can make a discrete logic circuit that can drive things just using the waveforms of your voice. But will that really give us enough intelligence to drive a puppet's mouth? I think I need to do a few more experiments. I have the Tektronix scope set up to a wide time scale so we can see entire voice waveforms and analyze them. I'm going to capture a specific phrase on the scope and then we can analyze it in more detail. So I'm gonna set my trigger and then talk. Hello, I am the internet troll. So here's the entire phrase, hello, I am the internet troll, and our circuit is triggering when the waveform goes above the magenta line. Let's look at it more closely. Obviously there's pauses in the dialogue, and we'll probably use the pauses to actually open and close the jaw. Now, the human voice, or any sound, is a wave. It's, you know, based off intensity, which is the volume and frequency. So, this is volume! And this is frequency. Those are the two separate things. <laughs> so we're mostly looking for volume. We don't care about the frequency, but the frequency is still there. And if you look on the scope, no matter what, the frequency is going to create, um, well, I don't want, well, it is basically a square wave. It's never gonna be a solid square wave. And so therefore we can't say, jaw open, jaw close, jaw open, jaw close. If we actually go off the resulting wave, it's gonna be like, it won't, well, it won't even move that fast. It'll be much faster than it could possibly handle. So what I wanna do is look at the minimum spacing here and get the timing from the scope. And then we'll build another circuit, probably a 555 one shot, that looks at two pulses that are close enough together. Let's use these for an example here. We can build an additional circuit using a 555 or some other timer. And we'll set it up to have a minimum on cycle or one shot. So when this circuit triggers any sort of sound, the 555 will turn on for a minimum amount of time. And that minimum amount of time should be dependent on the waveforms we see here. So if we look at these, we need to look for a minimum pulse and then smooth it over like that. So instead of seeing four separate pulses, you see one large pulse. And that'll get us a better chance of actually getting the jaw motion based off the individual sounds and words rather than the frequency of the audio itself. Is this confusing yet? Actually, I don't think it's that confusing. So here's a more complex word. So you can see the closer these are together or further they are apart, it's different frequencies in my voice. I'm going to get some timing information off of the scope and use that as the basis for the next part of the circuit, which will take the timing of my voice and turn it into mechanical motion. Now it's time for a tech timeout. The most important integrated circuit we're using in this project is an operational amplifier, or op amp for short. You probably have seen this symbol in schematics. Basically what it does is it compares the difference between two inputs and that affects the output. There's many different ways you can hook them up with negative feedback or as comparators. Uh, what we're doing for our project is we're bringing the microphone input here, comparing it against the voltage here, and then amplifying it because there's 
uh, negative feedback on that. Then taking that into another op amp and further amplifying it. And then using a third op amp as a comparator where it's saying, hey, is this input voltage higher or lower than this point? Well, then output a one. If not, output a zero, basically turning a wave into something binary. Uh, you can also use an op amp in that form for something like a battery voltage level detector. You'd have four op amps with your battery level here and a series of voltage dividing resistors on the other input. And as the voltage drop past this point, this point, this point, this point, the op amps would be like, oh, the voltage has dropped below this point, LED off. It's dropped below this point, LED off. And that's how you'd get your four LEDs of battery power. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with op amps. Look them up online and give them a try. Normally with puppets, uh, people stick their hands inside the puppet and they use their hand to make the mouth move. But we're going to make our own robotic jaw, so you don't need to stick your hand inside the puppet. It's more sanitary that way, because who knows who has stuck their hands inside that puppet. So what we're gonna do is start by making the upper palate, so to speak, so the top half of the jaw, that doesn't move. Now on a puppet, normally, you know, your hand does this, so the puppet, its head is moving back as much as its jaw is moving down. On our puppet, we're gonna make it proper, like a real human head, even though it's a puppet. All right, so we have this base shape here, and we have, it's only about 2.5 inches wide, or well, it's exactly 2.5 inches wide. And then in the middle, this is where the lower jaw is going to intersect with it. So the lower jaw is going to be like the thumb, because on the puppet that we're working with, there's a small spot and, you know, it'll only fit a thumb-shaped thing. So we're gonna give this plenty of gap so these pieces can cross between each other with no problem. Uh, let's uh, extrude this out. There we go. Okay, so we have the portion that represents your four fingers. It's not quite as long, but that's okay. It is about as wide though. Hands aren't really that wide if you think about it. And then in the back we have these pivot points and they have knockouts on either end because we're going to have a mount that this slides into. So this is just one piece of a larger puzzle. And if you look at it from the side here, there's some of it carved out, and that's because there's padding inside the puppet mouth that your fingers curl around, so we had to accommodate for that. Let's get this printed. Let's make the lower jaw. This is the part that will actually do most of the motion. We're going to use our base file from before, but we're only going to make the center of it and make sure there's a lot of gap for uh, tolerances. 3D printers are pretty decent, but you know their tolerances are a lot sloppier than most other machines, but whatever. So the side view here represents what we're gonna have. We're gonna have the pivot point, and the lower jaw here. And this portion back here, we're going to leave blank. That way when the jaw opens, it won't intersect with whatever is supporting it. We haven't designed that part yet, but we will. And back here, there will be a tab to attach a linkage or a actuator rod. Let's extrude. There we go. All right, so here's it in three dimensions. As you can see, there's a little bit of gap at the top and the bottom, so it slides in easily as well as pivots easily. Uh, if we made it exact size, it would be a it would be pretty sticky. And then back here we have a tab which we'll use to actuate it. Let's print this part. We've got the two portions of jaw. Now we need something to mount it to. Again, we're using the original base file, making sure there's enough gap. And we're going to design a mount that will clamp onto the sides of the jaw because it had those knocked out portions. And we're also gonna design it so that a piece of one inch, which is actually 1.06, inch PVC pipe can fit up inside of it and be glued in place. All right, so here's our base design. Let's extrude, Whoop, there we go. All right, so these portions here will lock around the upper pallet. This hole here is so that the linkage can, you know, connect to the top of the jaw. And we gave it a filleted edge so that it won't bump against things. And then on the inside, we have a place for the pipe to insert and then a stopping point for the pipe. Let's get this part printed and then we can assemble the jaw. We've printed some 3D parts to help us make the puppet's jaws. There's a mount which will go into a one inch PVC like that. 
There's the upper jaw, which will be inert. There's the lower jaw. This is what will actually move. I made it a different color, so it's easy to distinguish what the parts are. Also, actually, that's not why I made it two different colors. I was using two different printers, a little bit of different colors. So let's put a steel pin through this. I have very sloppy tolerances on these parts so they can move freely. It kind of looks like a gray tongue. Come on. <laughs> so you see it was blood, not blued. You know, this reminds me of something. Blood. No ketchup. <laughs> I'm going to lock the upper point of the linkage so it doesn't rotate. <clears throat> Let's see. This does remind me of one of those toys you would get at the, at the fair or the museum, like the talking snake or whatever. I don't really remember it. It reminds me of something like that, though. I always like the robot hand on a stick because it's like a robot. <laughs> hey, today's experiment exchange, I've made a minimalist robot. I am not a minimalist robot. I am a proud robot. No, you're just a robot, you know? I am not just a robot. Okay, well, what do you think, sirs? Okay, I'm going to stop doing Joel Hodgson impressions long enough to put this inside the puppet head and see what happens. If we can get this to work, then the next part of the battle is actuating this rod electronically. I guess electronically and mechanically. So this is a tricky part. You know, when you stick your hand up in there, you can feel where the things are, but here we're kind of having to do a blind, although maybe I can, it's like I'm giving birth to a calf. <laughs> yeah, you shitty boys don't know how to don't know how to burr cattle like we do out here in Montana. If you don't appreciate the human hand, try to build something that replicates the human hand, and then you'll appreciate the human hand. It's a marvel of evolution or God, your choice. Wherever it came from, it's pretty impressive. Okay, I'm gonna hold my human hand <laughs> behind the jaw, because part of it is, you know, keeping enough structure behind the head. There we go. It is I, Captain Vegetable. Oh man, you really have to pull on this. Again, it's, you take for granted how strong your hand is until you try to replicate it. Let's see. See, the problem that happens is um, if you don't have any structure behind it, all the structure is based off the mouth in which case there's no frame of reference for it to actuate, or at least it doesn't work very well. Oh, gosh. I'm just thinking this project might have a much higher chance of success if we created our own head that had a talking mouth and then built a puppet around it instead of trying to put something into an existing puppet. Hmm. To recap this project thus far, we started building a circuit that would take the complexities of the human voice and boil it down to something simple, basically on-off voice states, to control a puppet jaw. We also started building a plastic jaw that could fit inside of an existing puppet, but we had some trouble with that. So in an upcoming episode, we're going to finish this project by completing the circuit and building the jaw directly into a puppet so it's there permanently. That way it will work a lot better. That's all the time we have for today. In next week's episode, there are rumblings outside. Zombies! Zombie attack! Will we survive? Find out next week. Ah! We'll see you then. What do your elf eyes see? <laughs> elf eyes. <laughs> I once had a fine robot body, but now look at me. I am naked! No, I think you just need to gain a little weight, robot. You know, just like Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> oh, hey, Ryan, who helps Max produce the show at Backflip Films, as I mentioned. <laughs> Sorry. The inhibitor chip, gone. <laughs> 
Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>